I don't think climate change should be categorized as an opinion. <laughs> my channel i am so happy that you wanted to join me today because today is a subscriber request video but now that we have this nice safe community of people who give a crap about the environment and uh, just sharing tips and guides and tricks on how to be more sustainable i thought it could be really cool to also talk about how to deal with situations where you engage with or live with people who do not share your interests in saving the environment because it happens to all of us i don't know anyone who only has people within their like network or living space or generally friend group family situation where everyone agrees that this is important. I don't think that those people exist. If they do, I envy you. <laughs> Usually we have to figure out how to talk to people and figure out how to save our energy and figure out which battles to pick and which ones to leave alone. And I am here to share with you the tips that I have and the things that I do in those situations. So this video is meant to help you if you surround yourself with people with whom you do not share interests or if you live with people, parents, roommates, etc. who do not share your beliefs, values and uh, who do not necessarily engage in the same kind of sustainable behavior that you do. What the heck do you do then? Okay, that was a really long intro. I hope you get the point. Firstly, I think it's really important not to preach or to put on the role of the teacher, even though it's super duper tempting. So if you're into sustainability, it's very likely that you have spent a lot of time and resources looking up information about pollution, climate change, wastefulness, consumer culture. And it's also very possible that a lot of the people you live with do not know a lot about these things. And the thing is, when you do not share the same fundamental information, it can very easily, when you want to share your beliefs, or if you want to tell people what to do, it can very easily come off as, uh, you know, like, teachy or judgy. And even though you don't intend for your information to end up being kind of judgmental, it can easily be read that way by people who do not share the information that you have. So there's a lot of miscommunication going and it's really easy to end up putting out demands and just telling people that they're doing everything wrong and you're doing everything right. And usually people don't necessarily listen. It's frustratingly difficult to talk to people who perhaps haven't researched climate change. And if you have, it's easy to sort of have this sort of balance of information affect how you're saying things. I hope that made sense. Instead of taking on this role of the teacher, the one who has to sort of distribute the information between the people that do not already have it, try and learn something together. So sit down and watch a documentary together, go to a lecture or a workshop together, do something that gives you the same fun fundamental level of information so you can talk about the things that you now both know and usually I have seen this from my own life it's so much easier to have a conversation about these things when the information they have is not solely coming from you and even though like that can be really infuriating having that information come from other people other sources more quote-unquote credible sources like for instance them watching something on their own or with you it can be much easier for them to understand you and for you to understand them if you have the same level of information. And a good way to get that is by engaging in something together rather than you teaching them. It's simply easier to do something together, to make it a fun project, an activity, something that you do together. To this also comes how we talk about sustainability and sustainable actions in general. Because it's really important now that we have the same basic level of information to use inclusive language. So again, it doesn't feel like you are demanding or requesting them to do something. So instead of saying, change banks, eat more green, include yourself in the request and in the demand saying, I think we should change banks. Do you want to maybe learn how to cook green together? Using yourself and putting yourself into the conversation is so much more constructive because it doesn't read as a criticism of what they specifically are doing. It ends up feeling personal really really quickly people feel attacked by including yourself into it it's going to become more like a fun project something you explore together and people are much more likely to listen to what you're saying or to simply just try it out because they don't feel attacked but because they feel safe 
This kind of falls under the same category, but show rather than tell. If you just ask people to stop using plastic bags, start using a canvas bag, stop doing this, start doing this, refuse straws, if you simply list demands of things you want people to change about themselves, again, it can easily come off as an attack or as something that is personally pointed towards them. And it fe doesn't feel nice. It, it feels like you're sort of a villain almost and people are going to react in a very unconstructive way to the conversation. So what I love to do instead is simply just do my own thing. Show them instead how easy it is, show them how fun, healthy, nice, cool, whatever adjective you want to add to this conversation. But show! Uh, when I started Zero Waste I didn't ask anyone else to stop using plastic bags, I just started using my canvas bag and then I went about my day. And these sustainable actions, they are visibly so powerful, it's like rings in water. So when you start doing something, other people are going to take notice and they're going to be inspired by you. But they're not going to be inspired if you sort of push them into the same direction. So I usually don't talk about these things unless people come up and ask me, hey, do you know this about canvas bags or what is the deal with plastic bags? And then we can talk about it. But, you know, like pointing fingers or generally pushing them to do something that they didn't think of doing is not going to get you very far. So I like to show people how cool it is to be sustainable. I love to simply just visibly do my own thing and let people see that and that usually works better. Also, don't panic if everyone around you do not go zero waste or start being sustainable overnight. That's a lot to expect from other people. And when we engage with each other in this amazing and safe community, all these small sustainable actions are going to seem really, really easy because we normalize them between each other and like when we do something for a long time, it ends up being in our habits and our routines and it's sort of normal and it's, it doesn't feel like a big deal remembering your canvas bag necessarily. But to other people who are completely new to sustainable actions and what to do as a consumer, these things can seem like really big changes. Especially if people do not necessarily feel motivated to do them, then it's like really, really difficult. It's, when we talk about sustainability and sustainable actions as obligations and chores, it's really hard to remember and it's really hard to sort of let it resonate with you because when we change our values it's easy to change our actions but if we only change our actions and don't change our values then it's really hard to keep those actions going. So don't panic if everyone around you don't change and become completely sustainable overnight. Instead I try to pick my battles a little bit, I don't panic when I can't convince everyone to go sustainable. Some people are just beyond help and I don't want to spend any energy trying to convince them otherwise when they've clearly made their point that they don't want to do this. Instead I want to spend my energy and my time helping people, talking to people who actually feel interested in sustainability. I think that's much more constructive also mental health wise for me. Also you cannot expect things from other people that you don't expect from yourself or you didn't expect from yourself when you weren't interested in sustainability. So let people do things in their pace, let it let them fail and then succeed and then fail maybe a little bit some more, like that's also fine. Be a good support but don't try to control their sustainable journey or don't try to control everything that they do. Again, be the good example visibly without pointing fingers or correcting them every time they do something wrong. I also try not to push people too hard um, because I have been doing this for five years and when people come up to me and they're completely new to this and ask me what can I do? I usually don't, you know, unload everything there is to be done. For instance, my dad, he's really proud of not using plastic bags, but rather using canvas bags. And whenever he asks me, isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? And I always say, yeah, that's amazing. I know what kind of things I can inspire him to do and what kind of things I perhaps will inspire someone else with. Like, I don't want to unload everything about animal agriculture and fast fashion and pollution from fossil fuels industries on my dad, simply because he he thinks sustainability is all about the canvas bag right now. Like, that's okay. People have limitations and also we cannot process every single piece of information all at the same time. So let this also be sort of a gradual thing instead of trying to unload everything you just learned on other people. Again, it's going to sound really overwhelming to them. And it's easy to feel really discouraged when you just get this huge 
amount of information and you don't really know what to do with it you were just really proud that you refused the straw so does it make sense like respect people's limitations and take it a little bit at a time because that's also the most sustainable way of being sustainable like it's easier to be sustainable for a longer period of time if you do things slowly if you gradually include things rather than just saying okay monday morning marathon let's go like it's unrealistic so it's a good idea to chill this is something i think is really important at least it was really important to me but don't expect everyone to understand your emotions about sustainability sustainable transitions and a sustainable lifestyle and now i'm specifically referring to things like eating plant-based veganism can be really really personal and rooted in a lot of deep feelings and it can be really hurtful when people don't reciprocate those emotions or when they simply just don't comprehend yours you have to understand that not everyone is going to be able to understand your emotions about these things and even though it might seem overwhelmingly unfair which it also sometimes is so rather than expect everyone to understand your emotions by feeling feeling them themselves explain to people that this is something that means a lot to you and this can be any kind of thing related to state to sustainability i have a friend who were really devastated by the information he learned about fast fashion so he asked his parents to stop buying him clothes from fast fashion shops and rather than you know pointing fingers and saying stop buying it it's bad you're bad explaining that this means a lot to you if they would stop giving these things to you and you know they mean well they want to make you happy with gifts but they simply become sad and like discouraged and it it would feel better if they gave you something else do you feel um so explaining that this is something that means a lot to you explaining that these are feelings that you have and if we could have could perhaps work together to make sure that i feel okay and then also simultaneously proposing new alternatives so saying i really really would love if you would stop buying me fast fashion instead i would love to be invited out to dinner let's go to a restaurant and use those money you would have spent in h m let's go out and get some drinks let's go out and get some nice food so you sort of propose a, an alternative that is more sustainable and that works better within your ethos because that's what i have seen from my own experiences a lot more constructive in my experience this is more constructive because you explain to people that this is something that you have strong feelings towards and you also give them an alternative so they don't just stand there like okay what do you want me to do about it you show them the problem and you show them the solution at the same time I also think it's important to mention that you are not responsible for everyone's sustainable transition. No. No one has time for that. That will... That will... Uh, <sighs> Sometimes you're going to be around people, live with people who do not have the same priorities as you and who do not want to commit to sustainable actions in the same way that you do. And there are a couple of things you can do about it. First of all, and I think this is the most important, just do your own thing and you cannot change everyone and you cannot spend all your energy trying to change one stubborn person like that doesn't make sense and it's not fair to you either so rather focus on what you can change and this is also especially if you live at home with your parents still and they are still the ones that dictate how things are run in the house again focus on the things that you can change for instance by wanting wishing for sustainable gifts for christmas or birthdays and saying can we go thrifting that could be really cool doing things that you know you have control of you can also ask your parents or roommates or whoever you live with uh, to let you cook once or twice or sometimes a week where you can do things the way you want you can buy the groceries that you perhaps want to buy or you can use the ingredients you want to use in your dish if you have a day where you cook green food then it's probably not going to kill anyone and even if they don't like it i mean like what what can you do like not not everyone will agree with the sustainable swaps that we make and that is also something we have to realize and be okay with because again otherwise it would take up too much of our energy 
but there's so many things that you can do even if you only have your own room to change in. Look at what clothes you wear. Is there any way, shape or form where you can perhaps go thrifting, perhaps with your parents or friends, or you can wish for other things for Christmas. What kind of beauty products do you use? Is there anything that you can DIY and make yourself? Instead of focusing so much on all the things you cannot change, try to look at the things that you can change and where you do have control right now. When you start prioritizing sustainable swaps and when you start thinking in these green directions and not everyone around you is doing the same, it can affect relationships both with parents or friends or partners. It can. And it is it is really hard <laughs> to to like make this sort of like this is always the way it's going to go down, like a universal guidebook to help you with those situations. But I can tell you what I did. And when I started my zero waste journey five years ago, I lived with my ex at the time, and some of the things were really easy to get incorporated into our apartment and into our lives. There were many things that he was very on board with and thought were great ideas. And then there were other things that was just completely impossible and I think that is the situation most people are in at this point and generally that is also what I can see from the comments whenever we talk about partners, friends, parents, roommates, stuff like that. Some things will be easier to incorporate rather than other things and it's always a good idea to start with those small things that you know you can change and you know your surroundings will be okay with as well and then slowly move into other things or like introduce these things in a pace, I think that makes more sense. But stuff like, for instance, when I started this whole thing, not when I started, I think it was a year, a year into zero waste. So four years ago, I started to look into vegetarianism and cutting out meat. And that was also kind of okay, but I ended up having to make two different meals at night because um, the person I lived with didn't want to cut out meat whatsoever. So we had to make two kinds of meals and slowly that wasn't the only reason of course but slowly th this difference just completely affected all other aspects of the way we live together and in that sort of sense I realized that my sustainable journey is really important to me and I get to choose what kind of people I want around me and what kind of people that I don't. That is not the case when we live with roommates because we have no choice or when we live with our parents. So it's a really bad idea to sort of, you know, like break up with everyone in your life that do not fit your description of sustainability. Not what I'm saying. But in some cases it's okay to draw boundaries and say like that's just the limit for me. That's not what I want to do. Don't take bullying or abuse from someone or like jokes that are made on your behalf that you not, do not like. No, like it is completely okay to have boundaries and to not always be the good example if you catch my drift. I think the most important thing when it comes to talking to people you disagree with about sustainability is show them rather than tell them and don't feel obligated to change their lives. Don't feel responsible for their sustainable journey and also pick your battles very wisely. Some people do not want to learn anything, some people do not want to be challenged and it's a really bad idea to spend all your energy on one stop in person when you could have interacted with three other people that would be much more constructive and healthy for you to interact with. So like leave it alone if it doesn't seem like it wants to change. I don't know who it is, um, but I've definitely seen a lot of people in my comments and in my DMs talking about how they have really stubborn and honestly really nasty people in their lives that is actively making sustainable choices harder for them. And it's really hard to guide people and to advise people in those specific situations because I don't know how everything else is affecting that relationship. But it's okay to have your boundaries and your limits. It's okay to express when you don't feel safe or you don't feel like you're being treated well. You shouldn't accept being mistreated for any reason ever. So okay. And um, yeah, pick your battles and if you just have a person in your life that is just downright against everything that you do then either stop communicating with them or stop sharing that part with them or you know like just focus on the things that you know you can change by yourself and don't listen to it like uh I seldom try and convince people that climate change is real or that sustainability is a good thing. I simply don't have the time and when we start prioritizing our time and start valuing our time we will also start having a healthier relationship 
to yourself and to your own sustainable journey and to other people's sustainable journey because my time is too darn valuable to be spent trying to convince some dude that climate change is real like I don't have time for that and I'm not going to spend my time like that instead there's so many other people who would love to listen there's so many other people who want advice or who perhaps have advice for you i think it's important to realize that the sustainable choices you make can be rooted in deeply emotional things climate change is scary pollution is scary there's a lot of these things that we do small tiny things even if it's just refusing the straw that comes from a deep rooted fear in what happens if we don't what happens if people humanity not like just you but you know like humanity what happens if we don't change i think it's important to always keep in mind that those feelings should be respected and that you can use them or they can be sort of ventilated in both really constructive ways and in really unconstructive toxic ways and that for the most part depends on what you choose to do and how you choose to talk about them and you know like work with them but it also has something to do with how other people treat you and who you end up engaging with and spending time with and stuff so point of this video prioritize and value your own darn time and talk to people that you feel benefit you and don't spend your time talking to people that don't control what you can control and sort of try to not feel too responsible for people that won't change we don't have time for it okay thank you so much for watching this video i hope you liked it this was a little bit of a long one and a little bit of a very like heavy talk one i hope this was okay if you have any advice for people in these situations or if you generally have advice about talking to people who do not share your beliefs opinions and values i don't think climate change should be categorized as an opinion <laughs> then leave them down below and let's talk about it and perhaps help each other. I love when you guys interact, it's amazing. Thank you so much for watching, have a really great day and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!